Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to our worship service this most special holy night as we celebrate the birth of our Christ, our salvation, our Lord, our Savior. Welcome. I do want to make sure that everybody has a candle for at the end of the service, we will have a little candlelight time. If anyone needs a candle, just raise your hand. We'll get one to you. Thank you. All right, so candlelight at the end of the service. Um, someone will be coming through the middle uh, aisles or the two aisles, side aisles, to get those lights going. <coughs> We will also be celebrating the Lord's Supper, communion tonight. When we get to that portion of the service, our elders will come forward. <coughs> kind of started with the pandemic and with all the crud going around, we're continuing right now to use these little two-in-one cups. So um, elders will bring this to you. If you'll just cup your hand, they'll place it in your hand, then hold on to it and we will partake together once everybody has the elements. Welcome for those of you joining us online, gather your elements as we will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Back to that candlelight lighting time. If your candle is the unlit candle, you do the tilting. <laughs> All lit candles should stay upright and let the unlit candle do the dipping or tipping. Tomorrow, we will not have Sunday school, but we will have worship at 1030. All are welcome. You can come as you are. I think kids will be in their pajamas. I'm not sure, um, but we will have a worship service tomorrow morning. And in that service, we will reenact the nativity scene. We have a cute little program written by our own Lisa Campbell, the first Christmas through the eyes of Mo, the donkey. Mo has some history here in our church, but through the eyes of the donkey, we will be telling the Christmas story. So I think that's everything. I'd like to invite those that are lighting the Christ candle to come forward. We have been doing a series through Advent in our church called From Generation to Generation. And every Sunday as we have lit, lit our Advent candles, we have been representing the different generations and we do so tonight as well. Over a hundred people from the ages of two to 80 years old were asked to fill in the blank for this statement. My story is blank. From the voices of different generations, hear their answers. Amazing. Just beginning. A wee bit messy and full of love. I'm sorry, privileged. <laughs> Hopeful. Full of silliness. Still unfolding. Long but good. One of resilience. Incomplete, thank goodness. Multilingual. A work in progress. My story is not just mine, it's tied to yours. Tonight we tell the story that we tell every year. The story of Christ's birth, the story of love made flesh. It's a story that weaves through every generation. It's a story that picks up the bits and pieces of our narrative and brings us together. So tonight we light the Christ candle because from generation to generation, our story belongs to God. Thanks be to God for love like that. Amen. Let us stand as we sing together, O come, all ye faithful.
Please hear our call to confession. As a kid, I used to think the prayer of confession was scary. I thought it was a moment designed to make me feel guilty, intended for eyes cast down and shoulders hung low. But that's not it at all. The prayer of confession is an invitation. It's an opportunity to say, this is who I've been, and this is who I long to be. So let us pray together. Let us be truth tellers. Let us hold our heads high and speak honestly before God and one another. This is easy to do when we are surrounded by a God who delights in us. Friends, let us pray. Holy God, we admit we don't fully understand the Christmas story. We are not familiar with angel choruses. We have not walked many miles to be counted in a census. And we don't always hear your voice in our dreams. We don't fully understand this story, so we admit sometimes we hesitate to tell it. Instead of running out into the street to shout that there is a love bigger than we could imagine, we whisper this good news. Instead of throwing open the doors and inviting people in, we simply leave them unlocked, hoping folks will figure it out. Instead of telling the next generation why this night matters so much, we stay quiet, afraid of creating pressure. Forgive us for our silence. Forgive us for our hesitation. Forgive us for the moments when we fail to share your good news. Plant this story of love so deep in our bones that we cannot help but share it from generation to generation. Amen. Hear the assurance of forgiveness. Friends, repeat after me. No matter where we go, no matter where we go, no matter what we say, no matter what we say, no matter what we do, no matter what we do, we belong to God. We belong to God. We are held. We are held. We are loved. We are loved. We are forgiven. We are forgiven. Amen. Again and sing a little town of Bethlehem.
Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we need this story, this Christmas story. We need this story of ordinary people who were brave. We need this story of love that changed the world. We need this story of angel choruses that give reason to hope and starlight that reminds us to look up. In a battered and bruised world, we gather around your word like people gather around a fire to warm themselves. So we are here, gathered together to warm ourselves by your light because we need this story. We need the truth that lies deep in these holy words. So today we pray, seek out space in us to truly listen, quiet our minds, open our hearts, kindle the fire. Amen. And we hear the Christmas story from the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter. In those days, Caesar Augustus declared that everyone throughout the empire should be enrolled in the tax lists. This first enrollment occurred when Quirinius governed Syria. Everyone went to their own cities to be enrolled. Since Joseph belonged to David's house and family line, he went up from the city of Nazareth in Galilee to David's city called Bethlehem in Judea. He went to be enrolled together with Mary, who was promised to him in marriage and who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for Mary to have her baby. She gave birth to her firstborn child, a son, wrapped him snugly, and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the guest room. Nearby, shepherds were living in the fields, guarding their sheep at night. The Lord's angel stood before them. The Lord's glory shone around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. Look, I bring good news to you, wonderful, joyous news for all people. Your Savior is born today in David's city. He is Christ the Lord. This is a sign for you. You will find a newborn baby wrapped snugly and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great assembly of the heavenly forces was with the angel, praising God. They said, glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, let's go right now to Bethlehem and see what's happened. Let's Confirm what the Lord has revealed to us. They went quickly and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw this, they reported what they had been told about this child. Everyone who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. Mary committed these things to memory and considered them carefully. The shepherds returned home, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Everything happened just as they had been told. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
seven years ago, we began our intergenerational Christmas program, like the one we will have tomorrow morning. It was the first year that we had the intergenerational program and without a practice. Because the season just gets so packed, so many activities, we decided not to add to that. So it was our first intergenerational Christmas program with no practice, but it was in the evening, the weekend before Christmas. I commented that I thought it was fitting that it be with no practice. You see, I think with our cards and our carols and our decorations, and our lights, as beautiful as they are, we romanticize and sanitize the holy night. Mary and Joseph and the shepherds, they did not get to practice. So here's what happened with our no practice nativity. It was 2015, some of you may remember, Tyler was our narrator and was in the pulpit. The registrar, whom Mary and Joseph were traveling to see to be counted, got in place. The innkeeper got into place, and she would shake her head no when Mary and Joseph came by. No room. Next, Mary and Joseph, played by Allie and John, got in place after they were turned away from the inn. They made their way to the stable, which was right here on a couple of chairs. And the wrapped baby Jesus, just waiting for the right time to appear, was under the chair. Mary goes to get the baby Jesus at the appropriate time, but the leg of her chair was on the blanket. So she pulls and pulls, but no go. Joseph, being the good man that he is, notices Mary's struggle and tries to help. And so here he pulls baby Jesus between Mary's legs. <laughs> and I had to look the other way because I just knew I was going to laugh. Next came the angels, the shepherds, and a couple of sheep. Now the sheep were our youngest actors, and one didn't want to stay, so she found her parents and left. The other sat down front and center. This one was played by Anna, but she did not look too happy. Sister Clara seemed to be aware of Anna's plight and kept patting her ever so sweetly on the head. Then she bent down and kissed her on the cheek. Nothing wrong with an angel kissing a, cheek, a sheep in my book. And finally the wise men came in. Now, I'm not sure what happened back there, but I could see Dan Archer's shoulders going up and down because he was laughing about something. With the scene complete, it was time to move to the stable outside on the front lawn, we thought it would be so cool to move our inside nativity scene to the outside so passers-by could see and get a little bit of the Christmas story as they drove by. Only problem was, it was dark. And there were no floodlights on the stable. No one could see anything. Do some of you remember that year? <laughs> I share this story from 2015 for two reasons. One, we are called to share the story, the Jesus story, yes, and also our story, our family stories, our church stories. You see, our stories lead to Jesus. 
We are part of Jesus's story. And we are called to share the story from generation to generation. And the second reason why I share that story is because our little intergenerational nativity was very real. It was very imperfect, just like it is to this imperfect world with all the imperfect people that the Christ child came. I have always believed and still believe that God has a sense of humor. So I hope our nativity program made him smile. And I hope to see you tomorrow morning. Who knows what will happen? I think sometimes we take ourselves too seriously. And I think that often happens around Christmas and the high expectations. We want everything to be perfect. Neon sign. We are imperfect people. All of us. We live in an imperfect world. It is not going to be perfect. There's a little mean thing going around on Facebook. Um, it was not meant to be a burden. Have some of you seen that? All that we think we must do and accomplish during Christmas, it was not meant to be a burden. What does a perfect Christmas mean anyway? Who would have thought that the creator of this world would come to the world to be placed in a manger? Chances are, if we are too wrapped up in trying to make this a hallmark Christmas, which is probably not going to happen, maybe we don't have our focus and our attention, our energy and our hearts in the right place. Chances are we are forgetting to come to the manger. We are forgetting that it was to a manger God came. Chances are we are so focused on ourselves and not remembering the story of God taking on human flesh and coming as a helpless baby for all people to show us God's love. We might miss the miracle. We might miss the manger. We might miss Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Galatians that Jesus was born at just the right time. Paul said, but when the right time came, God sent his son who was born of a woman and lived under the law. God did this so he could buy freedom for those who were under the law, and so we could become his children. Since you are God's children, God sent the spirit of his son into your hearts, and the spirit cries out, Father. So now you are not a slave. You do not need to live in fear. You are God's child. And God will give you the blessing he promised because you are his child. And that, my friends, is the good news of great joy for all people that the angels sang about. That is why God sent his son into this world to redeem us, to put us right with God so that we could be God's children. God's children. All of us. You know, I think it's great to do what we can do to make this time of year as special as we can. 
pretty trees and lights and decorations, delicious food, time spent with family and friends. But the real gift of Christmas is the gift of Jesus given to us all so that we might know in the midst of our being imperfect, in the midst of this uncertain world, and in the midst of our struggling and pain, even in the midst of our imperfect rejoicing, we belong to God. We are his children, holy, completely, perfectly loved and accepted in all of our imperfection. So my friends, come. Come to the manger for the first time, for the 10th time, for the 50th time, or the 90th, whatever it may be, come and be reconciled to God. Come humbly with a willing spirit and open heart, experiencing the gift of God's love and reconciliation. Come because you know the rest of the story. Jesus grew up, lived a sinless life, reached out and loved the least and the last and the lost. He came humbly and he died in humility. But death was not the end of the story. Resurrection and new life are. So come to the manger. Come to the table. You who are hungry, come. You who are thirsty, come. And then, go. Go from the manger and go from the table, just like the shepherds, praising God and sharing the story with all. May it be so. Amen.
For some of us, every Christmas Eve, we gather together in this same room. For others, this is your first time here. We gather to tell the same story of a babe born in a manger. The plot never changes. There are never any surprise twists. So why do we do it? Why do we keep telling this same story? We tell this story because our spirits need to hear it. And over and over again, like water in the desert, we need to be reminded that God has drawn close to this hurting world. We need to be reminded that God just couldn't stay away. This is true on Christmas Eve, and it is true at this table. Every time we gather at this table, we tell the same story. The story of the Messiah who gathered his friends together for one last supper. The story of a Messiah who loved us so much, he just couldn't stay away. So friends, bring the parts of you that feel like the desert. Bring the parts of you that are aching to hear this story again. Because the good news is for you. Let us pray. Author of our lives, we admit that there is something so marvelous and wonderful about this night. The glow of the candlelight and the familiar hymns. The kids that are wound tight with contagious, joyful energy. The feeling that something we've been waiting for just might be within reach. Joy and hope are in the air, so thick we could almost <coughs> bottle it up. But we don't want to bottle up this feeling. We want to share it. We want to share the joy of this night with the children of this city, with single parents, with lonely young adults, with our unhoused neighbors, and with those who are grieving. The people who couldn't quite make it home for Christmas. We want to share this hope with people who had imagined that this year would be different. That this year they would have what they were looking for. We want to share this night with families who couldn't afford to put much under the tree, as well as with those who are new to this country, <coughs> fleeing a life that was unsafe or unwelcoming. We don't want to bottle up the magic of this night. We want to share it. We want to pour your good news all over this community. We want to sing like Mary sang until all who are looking for you have found their way home. So help us to live, Lord, like the shepherds who weren't afraid to go and tell the good news. Help us to take the words of the angels to heart, to not be afraid. Help us to be as trusting as Joseph, who chose to believe the impossible. But more than anything, give us courage and conviction to tell this story. In a hurting world so desperate for hope, we have something to say. Joy and hope are in the air, so thick we could almost bottle it up. But we don't want to bottle up this feeling. We want to share it. So pour out your spirit on this table. Strengthen us from the inside out. 
as we tell your story of good news. With each telling, may we believe more and more. And may we more and more be the people you have called us to be. Come, Emmanuel. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and he blessed it, giving thanks to God. And he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given to you. In the same manner also, after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim Christ's saving death until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you. The elders serving come forward.
the body and the blood of Christ. Let us pray. Life-giving God, giver of life to all people, we give you thanks for this miracle that you have come to be with us. Come to be like us. Come to know us that we might know and be with you. We pray that our spirits may be renewed and our hearts enlivened to welcome this good news, to welcome you into our lives and into our world. May we see you in new places, hear you in new voices, work with you in new commitments to bring your peace and justice and love on earth. God, transform our lives so that you may use us as instruments of, our, of your peace. We pray in the name of the one who is our peace. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Elizabeth and Chris to come up to begin our passing of Christ's light to one another.
Go in the hope, peace, love, and joy that Christ brings to each of us. Go knowing you are a child of God. Go and share the story of this most amazing love. Amen.